Mike, Papa, thanks so much for coming in to talk about Merle's Record Rack, which you've owned forever. Let's talk about its history. For those who know New Haven, downtown New Haven, we used to go into Merle's Record Rack as a young reporter and say, hmm, what music do I want to be with my lighthearted story? And you guys would have it. That started in 1962 in New Haven. Who was Merle? Merle was a lady that came from Massachusetts and started the business on Chapel Street in Orange uh, with a, a new husband, Rudy. And, with a uh, new husband. A new husband, Rudy. <laughs> and, and, and so uh, she owned it for not too many years. And then uh, Joe Gaetano and Wayne LaSalle owned it for a number of years. And they, they started growing the business larger and larger. And um, I started working there. I was trying to think of it this morning, 76, 77. You were uh, like two. No, yeah, we a couple <laughs> 15, of more. Maybe. Yeah, 15, exactly. And what was your fascination with vinyl records? Well, vinyl records was nothing unique back then. So it was the music, the whole industry, the, the, the um, nights that people would perform. And then the next day, you'd get people going, oh, so I would you saw go to Toad's place and all the time, yeah. New Haven Coliseum. Before that, the New Haven Arena. Um, people would come in from the Meadows. People would come in from New York. But when they came to you, they had seen a performance, and they were like, I'm hot on this guy. Whether it was the Doors or Led Zeppelin or the Beatles, they wanted more of what they saw live. And that was what we were fulfilling and have been fulfilling. Now, Merle's Record Rack closed in downtown New Haven when? What year? Yeah, and so it was probably the late 80s. Okay. Uh, 89 ish. They started 90. They started New Haven, started going through, uh, we were lower Chapel Street. And, Resurgence. And the, yeah. Yes, and the transition didn't happen yet. And so it was a very lull down on that end of things, and we were needing more security than employees. And so we left New Haven, but we had a store in East Haven and uh, surrounding areas, um, the Connecticut Post, for many, many years. And uh, I, I opened in Derby in, in the 84. So you have locate. you took it over, you're the owner. Correct. You have locations where now? Well, now just uh, in Orange, Racebrook Road, the intersection of Racebrook Road and the Boston Post Road in Orange. And you're online? I'm online. We have a great big store. It's, you know what? The fun thing is um, online is great if you need something. But if you want to shop and you an want to feel it, you know what? It's an experience. You know, I say this to people all the time. You can go out and buy chopped meat for 50 cents and make a burger or you can go to a great restaurant and have a burger for $8. Yeah. It's the ambiance, it's the experience. People love shopping through the thousands of records that we have I'm in our about store. about small business, and it is an experience. So you take this over, you're in Orange, you're online. You're not only vinyl, but you're also collectibles. And I appreciate you bringing all this in, because let's go through some of this memorabilia that you have. So when people know when they walk into your store in Orange, they know, they know what's going on. What is that right there? But you there? ask me to do the impossible. Well, for a collector, <laughs> for a collector and people that your, love, and so I, the people that are going to watch this and gonna, are going to get what what collecting is about, what collectibles are about, and what what. Um, well, you opened up your trunk, and I just picked uh, up and, little things. And it was things. so hard because I kept wanting to put things in. But but the, the tip of the iceberg is, you know, I have things from the film work from 1966, and and just all these really valuable and collectible things that were so limited. Um, poster wise and, 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 and we do so many different things with transferring music for customers and that's the, and that's the, the, the part of our business that makes it really really worthwhile when you take somebody's little old record that came from their great grandmother that they recorded you know 60 years ago and it's all but they can hear their grandmother on it and they hear the voice coming through all of that static and, and noise and they cry at my counter. I've had more people cry because they've heard this and something that they hadn't heard in 30, 40, 50 years. The resurgence in vinyl, and I have kids in their 20s, and they kind of think that's really neat. They kind of look at that and go, oh my gosh, you know, vinyl. How long is that going to last, do you think? Is it just nostalgic right now? I mean, we used to, back in the 70s, also make yeah, ashtrays and yeah, plates out yeah. of these things. Remember and, and that? So it went down, and so it went through this big dip in, in, in things where people in the uh, you know late 80s, 90s were just leaving boxes and boxes of records on my doorstep saying, you know, went to CD, and they put a note on it. And now today I hear more and more people saying, I can't believe it. 
I just gave the stuff away. I threw it away. I told my mother to put it in the dumpster. You know, now they're coming back to it. So how long will it survive? I don't know, but I can tell you this. It's been the longest surviving media of anything. Well, Vinyl. Kids really think it's cool. Show me what this is. But it started on a cylinder. I know. A one minute cylinder. Then it went to a one minute to two minute flat record. And then they decided to put it on both sides, but they were still only two to three minutes long. Then they went to a, a little mini thing like this. Well, and then they went to this. a 45. Show me this. Because I so, had never so seen these this were, before. So these were called pocket records. So, so if you had a small little record player. Tommy James. Or you okay, had a little, a little you... box, but we won't. So if you had a little box that you brought around to your friend's house, you could play this little record on it. And I've this was Jay and the Americans on a what, little 45. What year? what year? This was 1966, 67, okay. right. um, that they were putting out. And then, and, and so the, the vinyl has been around as long as we can go back. And so we've had um, Keith Richards in the store. And what they were doing is they were saying that they don't know how long digital is going to last. Sure. So if it's you put something so on a CD, if you put something on a CD, we don't know if it's going to last 20, 30, 50 years. We don't know that, but we know vinyl will last 50, 60, 70 years. You keep putting this off. Show me what this is. This is part this of- This is kind of cool. Yeah, what, this is- What year? So this is an eight track. This was probably early, mid 70s. Um, it's been refurbished. We put new belts in it, did some things on the inside, but of course, Hot Tuna on an eight track. Eight track. An eight track, yeah. Eight so track that lasted was, how long? I remember putting and, that and, in my car. And so I was very, uh, I found something out not too long ago. And so I thought eight track, pre-existed the cassette. It came out two years, the invention of it, came out two years before the cassette. All right, and then it lighted the cassette. Okay, before so let's, that let's was hear reel this. to reel. So this is called the what? I call it the kaboom. Only because you can you can change tracks. It kind of gave that 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 um, wildy coyote guy that blows up things. Right? If you want to hit that. Who are you playing? Hot tuna. Big band in the early Not 70s. Not great sound, but really cute. Yeah. Well, if you brought it to the beach, you'd be the coolest kid there. Okay. And so you can you can dictate what you want it to play, um, previous to you know rather than just an AM FM little transistor. If I showed up at the beach with this, I think everybody would go wild because they would it's go so crazy, nostalgic and it's really fun and it's it seems indestructible. It, it is. I'm fascinated by this. What what is this? Because before you walked in here, I'd never seen one of these. What is that? This is uh, it, it's it's a, so at our shop we have all these crazy things and and that's part of what I do. I love to find something I haven't seen before, and that's what keeps me going every day. Like oh my gosh, I hadn't seen that before. You're going to hear from a lot of people. The problem is I stuff. get all this stuff, and sometimes it's it's junk and needs to be refurbished. And sometimes the problem with a lot of stuff is you need to refurbish things. And sometimes refurbishing things are more than they're worth. But I hate to see something that I haven't seen go to the boneyard. All right, put the and, clock And in. so everything. This runs on a little This runs wheel. on this little tire. Yeah, this is a very unique piece. And uh, it's so, so and it runs on batteries. It runs on batteries. And so if you wanted to, you know, something real simple and small, you can bring it right over to your friend's house and listen to the new records that are coming out. But where is she? Nowhere we ain't girl. And it still sounds pretty good. I don't know how you have it mic'd in here, but it, it still has a pretty nice fidelity. That's awesome. That's pretty neat. So you can put this in your pocket and you can go over to your friend's house with a couple of records, a couple of 45s. What does that cost to buy? This has been refurbished, so this will run around $125. For that tiny little piece of plastic. Yeah. Speaking of tiny little pieces of plastic. But you got to keep in mind, something like this is, is very Collectors. few of them. Well, but very few things have survived. And I tell that with people all the time when they go into refurbishing something. If it's something you haven't seen, it's been in your family, it's not always just about the dollars, it's about having something that you're not gonna see many of them left because most people that when they don't work, they throw them away. Sure. So there's less and less every year. What is this? This, one of the very first um, CD, or not CD players, but a cassette Walkman. And I brought in some earlier pieces um, 
uh, of the CD Walkmans, but this revolutionized how people listen to their music. They brought it with them. They were able to put it Mobile. in their pocket. Mobile. They hooked their headphones up, and cassette was the leader right then. And so this was the early 70s. And um, Tell me about these. I had never seen these shaped 45s, I guess we'll call them. Yeah, right. So they spin at 45 33s. RPMs. No, 45 RPMs. So everything is designed by RPMs. And this so is the Turtles. This is the Turtles. And, it, and if you look inside here closely, you can see grooves. And then, uh, so this is what they'd call a die cut. Uh, and so it plays just like a regular 45. It is circular, but they put some extra wax on it to, uh, to uh, resemble a turtle. Rolling Stones? Yeah, Rolling Stones. Same thing, um, 45, um, double-sided, um, kind of neat, die-cut, um, collectible. What year? Give me a year on that. This is probably 70s? about 1980. Oh, 80, um, okay. Let me see so, that. I yes. want to see the, um, I wanted to show one other piece that I had that was kind of neat was the Steely Dan. Oh, we, we don't that have oh, we that. Didn't bring that. Yeah, one. no. I'm just. I, we had so much stuff as we talked about in your I trunk. I couldn't figure out what we, to bring right, in. Right, exactly. Okay, so let's okay. talk about these three albums yes. of the Beatles. You've got three of them here. What's yeah. the difference? Because I know some folks at home are going to see this and say, "I have that album." Yeah, here. right. And so that's what happens with everybody. And so everyone says, "Oh, I have that record," or "I have that." But for instance, when they when they show it, when you see a monkey, you know, and they go. And then they got his oh, name written so then, across the top. Okay, so somebody got yeah, this right. and they and they yeah. wrote their and name. Yeah, and so so that when ruins you look at it, it, exactly, right? okay. exactly. So when people see it, they go. Oh, of course, I it's have too that late record. to change that because we already they, did when that it's in the seventies. Been in their basement and it's all wet. Yeah, it's not good anymore. But this is this pristine. I wouldn't say pristine. This is a little bit more pristine. And do you see the difference between the two covers? Yeah, so that's obviously cleaner. you see this, and obviously you see this this label not on it. Right. Okay. What's this worth? So this is only a. Eight, nine, ten dollar record. Okay. And so, so you see that. So you see the label up top. Yeah. Okay. You see the label there. Sure. You see the prefix before that. Sure. And you see the prefix there. Sure. So you know the difference. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's for you to answer. Okay. So which so, one's worth more? Well, that. Well, then, do you want to see this one? Yes, we do. Okay. So the difference between these are. So this is ST means stereo. Okay. The T means mono. Okay. So the mono one came out earlier. Okay. Less of it pressed. Okay. More people would when they were more coming out of the same. More expensive. More expensive. And then so this is the um, this is the butcher block cover. This is the one everybody goes crazy over. And I'm sure your camera isn't going to pick up that. You see the gray in there. Kind you of. You see the black. Yeah, right. That's Ringo's neck. So that was the one that had all the butcher block covers. The, they had the baby dolls chopped up on it, and they had meat cut up on it. So what's this worth? Well, that's about a. Twelve to fifteen hundred dollar record, and, but you and brought this in. This is twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, and but, so but we're not touching it because no, it's got a little touch plastic. It. I put a little, <laughs> so, anyways, this is what they call unpeeled. This is so if you peel this cover off, you heat it, you steam it, this cover would come off, and you'd see all of that, the meat, the gory stuff, the baby dolls' heads that see, they said I didn't was remember that. was way too um, was way too. You didn't want to take that poster out of my car. I told you. I, said, I told you you had a whole trunk full of stuff. I know. Anyway, but anyways, this is the V-neck, so that's how you can see the difference. Oh, you see, see that little black yeah, line I do in there? See it. That's Ringo's collar. So when you peel that, his thing was over to the side on this butcher oh block gosh. cover. All right, let's talk about this cover. Okay, and so there may be another one. Uh, now, okay, so this is the one that was more collectible. Rolling Stones got sued for this cover. So there, you'll see you Farrah Fawcett, here. Marilyn Monroe. Um, they got sued because they had no permission to, to correct, use the photos. Yeah, right. And so what they did was this came out for just a short amount of time, and then they made them pull it off the market. And what they did was they took all the Farrah Fawcett, Marilyn Monroe, um, Desi, um, Lucille Ball, they, they put just black spots over them. Well, see, that'll teach them. they got to get permission. I don't remember this. 3D. You see, if you move it a little bit, it's got the 3D. I don't even know if we can pick that up a yeah. little bit. Oh, yeah, so that's the 3D cover. And then there and was this just a plain one. That's the Rolling Stones. And, and so this was a period when the Rolling Stones and the Beatles were kind of connecting um, early years. And so deep in, in these um, areas, here and here, there's Rolling Stones, um, Beatles faces. What's and, the cost of this? And Collectors if you looked at the Sgt. Peppers, yeah. inside of those, they have Rolling Stones faces on them. 
So what's the cost? Kind of what's the cost of this, forth. Mike? That sells for about twenty-five bucks. Okay, twenty-five bucks. So I don't, I don't feel so bad. All right, the forty-fives. We don't have the forty-fives you know, anymore. Yeah, are these collectors' items, yeah, or are there enough of these around? Absolutely no. Um, so the picture sleeves really kind of turn 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 just a record into something being more collectible, and and you know to have the jacket all intact. Not too tattered, you know, just a I little. I used to alphabetize those. And yeah. Like a well, you know what holder. happened? People just threw the picture sleeves away because there really wasn't all that much to them, you know. It, and these got scratched though in the boxes. Yeah. Remember? Well, you know what happened was everybody would just pile them on each other and just kind of shuffle them around like they were playing cards, and they would become really scratched. But not many people hang, hung on to the jackets. The zipper, this is, uh, you know, iconic. Uh, That's Andy iconic. Warhol. Yeah, Andy Warhol. I just picked up a couple other pieces the other day. But it's got the zipper on it, which was, you know, functioning. That was and a wow back then. Th that was, yeah. <laughs> that well, was... you know what? The thing is, today people buy CDs and they go, I guess that's what's all with the um, downloading. They say, we miss Well, there's nothing having, tactile. There's nothing there's to There's nothing to see. Right. There's no inner jacket. I, you know, there's no depth to it. There's no looking at the label. There's no so when they download something, you're really getting something just on your computer, and it seem, seems so um, non-monetary. Where like, ah, I'll click and I can get rid of that, or I can click and I can get it again. So at the end of the day, Mike. You spent since you're 15 years this old. This is Merle's, though. Hold on, Ian. We oh, gotta right. talk about this uh, one sure. last one. Oh, this is Merle's. This From is so. This was Connecticut's greatest hits, and so this was. Um, one of the very first pressings of this, but Freddie Paris of the Five Satins. Oh, sure. And, you know, the Chosen Fuse and the Van Dykes. But Merle... Merle Shaw. Was, was, she was the founder, and they, and Rudy, I think is, yeah, and Rudy. This so was I think the I, new husband. I, I, yes, so I think I spoke about that earlier. You did. So they had this label, and so they were promoting New Haven groups. Which there were a ton of them. Ton of them. Ton of them. Singing. Michael Bolton came Sing, out of oh, this. Oh, yeah, 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 there's tons of them. But, but earlier Christy back in Holman. the day... Back in the early yeah. days, there were so many of the Majestics. And so they were singing under this... these overhangs in New Haven. Sure. Kresge's, anything that had a good acoustic. How did this album do locally? Very well. It, it, it charted like in the, in the New England area. Back and, and look, they had a you know a dollar ninety seven. It was a dollar ninety seven. Yeah. What do you yeah. sell it for? Well, today that's a first pressing of that, so that sells for more than a dollar ninety seven. Yeah, I know you're not going to say. <laughs> but, so, uh, and here's Bob Dylan too. We should. We yeah, should just show that's this a mon one too. mono copy of Bob Dylan uh, uh, of the Blonde on Blonde, and uh, you know he's still iconic. A lot of these guys that's so amazing that anybody that can stand the test of time, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, we still sell tons of Sinatra. They love them. One of my favorites. Yeah, I mean, how could you not love the Rat Pack? Mike, at the end of the day, you've spent since you're 15 in record shops. You're online, you have your bricks and mortar in orange. At the end of the day, what still jazzes you about this after all these years? Coming to see you in Nyberg. Oh, I paid you to say ah. that. <laughs> <laughs> really, what, what you, jazzes you, you after all, all these years? Just what we've been talking about. It's so fun to still give the archive of music to people. I love it. And he, so when I get a guy in and he's got his grandson and he's got his son and we start talking about things and in my shop we have, I got an old cell phone that looked like this, you know, and I was like, those were only the richest guys. And then, and you know, those things just still jazz me. I still love doing, I had a lady in, I took an old cassette, she, it was broken. She thought she had lost it forever. Forty years ago, her mother or mother-in-law, somebody spoke on this tape, and the tape came apart. The, you know where the lead goes to sure. the tape? And it came apart, and she's like, I'd love to hear. And so we mended it, we fixed it, we changed it over to a compact disc for her. She heard her mother talking again 40 years later. Which I mean, awesome. how do you not get her eyes out of One that? One more question. The biggest treasure you ever found, and did you sell it? At Merle's? Or did you keep it? At Merle's? Which you, it could be other place. At Merle's? I found my wife at Merle's. You found your <laughs> wife at Merle's. And on See, that, should, we're going to end be, this conversation because yes. that's awesome. Mike Papa, thanks so oh, much for thank coming you. in and thank telling you. us the it's story about fun. vinyl and Merle's record rack. Thank you, Ann. Thanks. It's a pleasure.